Ain't no last calls here. Bar Talk with Jay. Welcome to Bar Talk with Jay, sponsored by R&B Roll Off. That's right, local company that's showing us big things. Privately owned, Floyd came to me personally, and I like to say this man is showing me something new. Big companies don't seem to want to do a great handshake no more and right. be able to show you that they're small, but they're still large. Yeah. He's going to do the big things that the little people can still do that the big people say they can do. Right. That's what I like about my man Floyd. So, again, if you've got any kind of roll-off needs, please check him out from the 25s to the 30 yards, from the commercial to residential. Yeah. One of the things I like about him, he is a sincere man. Okay. He's a man that told me I can give out his direct number. Call the big company and see if you can get a CEO. That's all I got to say. You can call him and he'll right. pick up every time. Right. His number, 678-575-1481. That's his personal number. I like that. And then he decided to roll with us. But I got to get back to what I normally say. Craft Manic, how you doing, Big Baby? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Doing great, Big J. Um, just had another wonderful off day oh. today, so I'm feeling quite rested. Oh, you're a little chipper uh, today. Full of life. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. What was you doing your day off, Craft? That's what off days are supposed to be. What was you doing on your day off, Craft? That ain't none of your business. All right, all right. <laughs> so we got Macon, Georgia in the building. Barbara, how you doing, girl? Oh, Miss Barbara's in the house, and she's doing just wonderful. I had a day off the day also, too, Craft. You know something? I'm really tired of y'all rubbing this <laughs> okay. in. Okay. Brother had to go up in there. Put in his, you know, son. Uh, you know, I'm gonna get back to the good things. Saturday and Sundays off, you know. Thank what I'm you. We had Saturday and Sunday. All yeah. I want to know, bar talk ain't never off. Right. We sell what you have. That's all I got to say. Cause we always doing plugs. Yes, Come sir. on now, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But it's all right. It's all right. I'm so I like to, uh, like to welcome all of our guests tonight. Mm -hmm. This is Bar Talk with Jay, and uh, this is just Jay and I's opportunity to be leaders here in our community and to uh, inspire. And uh, we hope to inspire you through our dialogue tonight. Uh, got a very, very good show lined up for us. Thank you, uh, do. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I'm, I'm really interested to hear uh, people's opinions on the subject tonight. But, uh, you know, we're just trying to share a conversation and hopefully you'll find a way to uh, get something beneficial out of the conversation. Maybe it'll help you make up your own mind, even formulate your own opinions. So uh, that's what we believe real development is all about. It's about sitting around, talking about the issue, and uh, through that dialogue, clarity will unfold. So uh, thank you all for being here with us tonight. And uh, why don't we start it off with a prayer? Barbara, were you going to do our prayer tonight? Yes, I will do the prayer. Okay. I wrote, kind of wrote this for everyone. Mm -hmm. For a short prayer. Let me do this. Okay. Okay. I have it. Okay. In God's name we pray. Yes. Our prayers is God's supernatural favor over our lives. What we cannot make happen on our own, God will make happen for us. Supernatural opportunities, healing, restoration, and breakthroughs are coming our way. We are getting stronger, healthier, and wiser. We will discover talent that we didn't know we had and will accomplish our God-given dream the power that the Lord has given us. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. See, see, on, see, they was complaining to me. They said, we don't hear enough of Bar. So I had to make sure we get more in there. Yeah. Because we, we're we're growing. Absolutely. So again, as we grow, we, we try to make change. And again, Barbara was sick and uh, came through, talked on the phone with us, and now she's back in the studio. I don't know, y'all know how much committed you guys are, and I just want to make sure the world know I appreciate it. Craftmatic drives a nice distance. Every show, always here. So do Barbara, even further. Yeah. And you guys jumped in with my vision, and this is the proper time to tell you guys from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You're very because welcome, Jay. Everybody welcome. do not show appreciation. Thank you. That's not gonna happen here. Yeah. One of the things I gotta do, y'all inspire me, and I only wish I can continue inspiring you. Yes. That's what we do here at Bar Talk with Jay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks I, I appreciate sponsors. that, Jay. And and let me just respond by saying that uh I'm grateful for the opportunity that you have provided me to, uh, to be here on the show with you and to do part of, uh, of my vision and my dream, which is serving the world and helping people become their greatest. Uh, and I think this is a fa fabulous platform, man, and I'm, uh, I'm just grateful for your vision and, uh, and I just really appreciate being here. Um, we're doing this, folks, out of, you know, say the kindness of our hearts. 
but we're really doing it out of our passion and our purpose to uh, to be in front of folks who need to hear valuable information. And uh, and so we we like to think that uh, we're doing something extra special here. Uh, and as it blossoms and as it grows, um, we hope that you stay with us and uh, continue to experience some of the. Uh, the wisdom that goes on in this show. So I appreciate you again, Jay. Oh, yes. Just like I got to appreciate R&B Roloff and rolling with us. Um, again, and taking sponsorship. Again, somebody does also see something big in us. Yes. So that's why I got to say thank you guys. Because, again, we're making things come together. And I always got to make sure I take the time out and say thank you. There you go. And there just you like go. I got to go back to last week's show. Last week's show okay. was a very, very unique uh, show. Um, we talked about, it's basically the question is, what would be your response to someone telling you, I love you, when you don't love them back? And mine was, you so crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you really don't want to hurt a person's feelings, but one of the things I got to say, you got to be very honest. You got to be honest, and, um, absolutely. You don't always got to agree with a person. The number one problem of the day, you don't want to hurt a person's feelings, so you agree. Right. No, that's not true. You can be upfront and let them know in a softer way. Love is looked at different ways, and how you might love me now, I'm, I might not be there. Yeah. But if we go down this road together, I can get there. But I'm going to show you in a different way than you've probably seen before. Yeah. I'm a different cut. So a lot of times, people compare me to what they had. I'm something totally new. Baby. Yeah. And, you know, you know, sometimes, uh, especially ladies, they'll, they have a tendency to, um, to let how you feel mm -hmm. change their feelings. Right. So they when might when you say, oh, yeah. I don't love you back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah that's yeah, exactly I mean, right. I mean, and that's a problem. You know? a, a huge one. Because uh, if you love me, that uh, I'll be able to see it and experience it, and I'll Thank know you. that you love me. Um, and just because I don't say it back, don't doesn't necessarily mean I don't love you. It may mean I think you can't handle the information. That you might mistreat the information if I tell you that I love you. So uh, uh, it's not always that uh, eh. the person doesn't love you back. It's eh. that sometimes they they may be a little shy. They may not be interested in you misusing some information. Right. Uh, they may not want you to know their feelings so they can kind of keep control and, and things in check a little mm. bit because uh, uh, there's some people who misuse the fact that people love them. And, uh, you know, they basically use them, <laughs> use them up a little bit, right? Um that was a great show, man. That's I all I can say. I, I, it, it's an interesting subject, and we had answers from all over the board. But um, I think you know the the commonality among all of it is that um, if if someone tells you that they love you, they are really expecting you to say that you love them back. And uh, and if they change their mind about loving you because you don't say it back, it may mean that they really didn't love you in the beginning. Now, see, that you hit on a great point. Right. And you really shouldn't tell somebody with the expectation it's just coming right back. Right. It can be coming back in a different way. Right. You have to be patient for it because one of the, one of the things I like to say, when you fall into it, that don't mean they fell into it at the same time. Right. So you got to give it time right. to manifest like anything else. You plant that seed. So to tell a person you love them all the time and expect them to be able to say it right back, I like to say when they start doing that, it's a committee. Listen, I don't always say they're giving their true colors. Yeah, and it, it may sometimes be uh, something that will push people away from you. Yeah, it goes back to our time, uh, you know, because uh, hey, I'm trying to be miserable. Bro. Right, right. Well, before mean, we get there, we got to go to the quote of the day, yeah. like, which is, oh, I'm sorry. I, I want to respond to that. Okay, we can okay. Also we can also look at that in a different way, the love thing. Mm -hmm. Because in the eyes of the Lord, we're supposed to love everyone. Yes. I try to. Uh, we know. But anyway. Ooh, that was, a, <laughs> was that a knife I just felt in my back? <laughs> but anyway, when somebody gets to that point to where they really are in love with you, and they does, and that person doesn't feel the same way, you can always say, well, baby, you need to think about it because love is a strong word. And think about what you're saying before you say it to someone. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, because she said love. I, I like that. Okay. It's there. Right, back Yes, Jeremiah, <laughs> you got to get care first. Care, care is always care. there. See? There you Somebody go. didn't know me. You have to. I go to. for care. Yes! Thank you. Care is, care is before love anyway. You got to care about somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah that was... Uh, I didn't know what I'd be talking about. That was one of those things that came out of the conversation. It right? is. Because I always throw out care. If anybody ever known me and met me, Care is one of the things I throw out there first. Not love, right, ever. Right. Um, let's go to the simple form. Right. Because I don't know where you learned your love from, and my love might be totally different. 
Let's go with care. Right. And then we will start something that's positive. There you go. Not negative. There you go. And, uh, you know, care is a prerequisite of love. Oh, so uh, if you show care, then uh, you might begin to experience love. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about being in love too much, sometimes it just tampers the whole environment. Mm -hmm. So, um, Folks, if you missed the show, please go back and take a look at it. Uh, we are all over the Internet. Um, BarTalkWithJay.com, yes. YouTube, Facebook, Spreaker, Periscope, uh, iTunes. Black Planet. <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> oh, y'all, y'all, old cats, y'all know what that is. They oh ain't there. They ain't there. We uh, ain't like on YouTube and all the rest, but uh, yeah, yeah, we ain't on like Black Planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Print crazy. Finder. Right. <laughs> hey, we try to do everything that we can in social media. That's what we try to do. But we're going to hear go. from Barbara one more time. Barbara, can we hear your nice voice for the quote of the door? You sure can. But before that, I would like to thank my audience, mm -hmm. and I would like to give special thanks out to Miss Teresa Bradford, who just gave us a comment of saying that we need to keep doing a great job. Thank, thank, you, thank you very you. much, and we appreciate that, Miss Teresa. Thank you, Miss Teresa. Teresa, thank you. Enjoy. And That's the quote awesome. for today: uh -huh. Neither man or woman is perfect or complete without the other. Thus, no marriage or family, no ward or state is likely to reach its full potential until husbands and wives, mothers and fathers. Men and women work together in unity of purpose, respecting and relying upon each other's strength. Mm. Ooh, strong. I like yeah, that. that sounds like building a family right there. Mm. Uh, you know, I felt a little left out in this quote. Uh oh, right? You feel left out. How you don't feel that You're way, a part man. of the family. I mean, you know, it, it's talking about men and women coming together. It's almost suggesting that single folk might not be able to reach their potential. Man, <laughs> you know I'm single saying? too, play with you. I know, you. man, but you know, we're we gonna make that potential. We had a show, and we uh -huh. talked about, you know, what the life of a single person. Yeah, it's kind of rough. Yeah, and they, you know, uh, they they suggest that married folks are a little more successful than single folks, and maybe it's because they focus a little more. Maybe it's because they're living out the true divinity. Uh, man and woman mm -hmm. um, But if you're single, I think you just have to grind a little harder and play a little less And you can be just as, as successful as anybody else well, but, Or uh, you can listen to craft and you start writing it on paper pen and paper Because again a lot a lot of times when you've got a person that's standing next to you You got another person that's also helping you write it down and keep you focused. There you go. And a lot of time when you buy yourself, it goes back to that sheet of paper. And that's yeah. something that you gave everybody. And I want you to know these nuggets are very valuable if you really use them. If you don't, and you just listen to the show, and you just look at it as amusement, you would miss the bigger purpose of what we're trying to do. You know, uh, that's an interesting point, Jay, because uh, when, you, when we have quotes like this, uh, even sometimes I have to ask myself, how does the quote affect our audience? And if you just... We just simply want to open your mind to the idea that it is right for a man and a woman to be together, perhaps in holy matrimony or, you know, supporting one another, living perhaps together, helping one another. We just want you to know that we believe that the family is still important. And uh, the family is, is not as strong as it used to be, um, but, you know, you're not... Um, I, I'll just say it's not as strong as it used to be, but it's still very much important. And uh, the more we talk about family, the more we talk about the, the rightness of men and women being together, whether in marriage or supporting the kids or supporting the family, it's just right for a man and a woman to work together um, to, make, uh, to make their lives better and to make really the world better. So uh, it's just an idea that we want you to think about and uh, see how it feels when you start to think about it, you know, and, and talk about it with your own families and spouses and significant others, etc. I'll tell you what, um, it goes right into it where they asked me about my segment for the night, you know, and uh, they asked me about what my thoughts about the 80-20 rule, okay? Um, and when I hear that, my this is my personal opinion when it comes to the 80-20 rules, please understand, I look at 80-20 like 20-20, 20-20 vision, okay. you're looking more and it's more that you don't know. So a lot of times we focus on the beauty and not understand the person. Because if you really understand the person totally all the way through, mm -hmm. you will see more and then you understand the 80% rule. And then you won't let that 20% misguide you. Because it's really like, less there, it's just look good. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's rap nice. Yeah. Okay, when you unwrap it, you might find out. 
it's been spoiled, been tampered with, and ain't the same. But when you had a great prize already right there with you, um, we don't always see it, and I understand it. But if you take time and be patient, and one of the things I had to learn is patience, because I used to rip and run. When I ripped and ran, 20 was all I cared for. 20 was, I wanted the best of the best of the best. And I found out someone was the crazy, the crazy, the crazy. <laughs> right. When you really took your time, I started finding out some of my friends was more qualified than the ones that I figured should be my girl. But I didn't want to take time because they just gravitated to me for other reasons. Because they seen in me what I should have been seeing in myself. Right. I would have made better decisions earlier only if I believed in myself. So again, the 80-20 rule is going to be different for you than me. I had to learn some things first. So the 80-20 rule didn't really or really apply, didn't make good sense, but now it makes sense when I develop myself in a way that I would not let an 80 overrule the 20. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, I, I, just a quick comment on the subject. The 80-20 rule, as I understand it, it's, a, it's called the Pareto Principle. And basically what it suggests is that 20% um, of the people will produce 80% of the results. That's kind of what it's, what it's suggesting. Um, um, you know, it's an interesting concept, especially when you talk about a relationship, because um, each person in a relationship has a role to play. Right. And um, in this particular area of our family, of our relationship, you're going to have 80% of the work to do. Right? And in another area of our life, the, the, the lady is going to have 80% of the work to do. And what's most important is that when, when we each understand our role in a relationship, then it's okay that I play the 80% role. Right? Uh, I imagine a lot of men um, feel like, man, I'm the only one who can take out the garbage. <laughs> right? In the household, right? Yeah, now you got to call on the son and the kids, right? But... Listen, man, that's just the role of a man in a household. Right, right, right. That that he's going eighty percent of all the garbage that need to be taken out of that house. The man is going to do it, and uh, and once he's okay with that, then the relationship will thrive because everybody's kind of playing their role. The mother is going to typically do eighty percent of the cooking and and the kitchen type items. Um, we just have to really, really take a step back and say, hey, I may not be able to provide but 20% to this particular area of our relationship, but um, but I know the other 80% is gonna be taken care of by my significant other, and that's why I love them, and that's why I thank them, and that's why I'm grateful for them. So uh, there's just a lot of value in uh, interpreting a relationship that way, because you got a role to play, and if you misplay your role or you don't play your position, uh, you can cause some problems in the relationship. Ooh. i tell you what, since you went there, I want to talk about the topic. Yeah. Okay, folks, and here yeah, we go too. for tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a good one. I don't think they're ready for this. Okay, a couple has been together five years, mm -hmm. and the guy hasn't proposed. What's likely the issue? <laughs> right? We got to talk about these long-term relationships that never seem to manifest into a marriage or a fiancé. Or sometimes even a girlfriend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. oh, really? <laughs> but there's something going on, and I think it's important that we all talk about it. If you haven't been in that position, I promise you, you will be, um, unless you just meet somebody who's, uh, you know, who's just ready for what you're ready for. Uh -huh. uh, and most oftentimes, we're gonna we're gonna have lots of relationships that don't fully manifest, and we need to talk about why relationships don't manifest. There you go. Because I got somebody that looked like him, but not him. It's right. gonna be up next. Right. We're gonna give him a little plug and what do you think about this? Uh, I'm definitely gonna give you mine, but we gotta wait on that. We can't just give it all to you at one time because you gotta go to break. And we'll be right back with Bar Talk with Jay. With Jack, and we have DJ Crane sitting next to me. Got the smooth sound for you tonight, yes, sir. But we got my man, look like him, but not him on the line. Jamal, talk to me, my brother. He don't hear what's going on, Atlanta? Hey, 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 what's going on, big time? How you doing, man? 
I love to hear that. I love to hear that. Um, listen, I've been pretty excited about your segment, man. You always come with it. What have you got for us tonight, bro? Man, I hear it's a lot of confusion going on with people not understanding what their roles is, man. Like, you got starters trying to play the bench, bench players trying to play the starter. Women, if we tell you what it is up front, you can't come back to me three, four days later and try to put me on glass. Like, I told you what it was up jump. You can't get your feelings hurt because I told you the truth. Mm. If I got four or five different females, I told you. Mm. Don't cry about it. Just gonna get you somebody else and y'all use a, you know, condom and we be straight. Keep everybody business to themselves. Mm. <laughs> Alright, that might be hard to swallow. Yeah. <laughs> that is. That's um that's a tough one. That ain't me. You know what I'm saying? That's somebody that look like him. Yeah. <laughs> but they ain't talking like, like me. <laughs> Alright, so I had a female that hit me up not too long ago and was asking, like, you know, you know, what's our situation? What are we to each other? Man, you know I care about you the homie. You know I'm always gonna care about you. See, I had to say it like I really on some mushy stuff. Mm-hmm. But I said it without like I would say it to my partner and the man, you know I got love for you, bro. Appreciate that was happening, you know what you is. I hit her with the same thing, but I had to put on a lifetime voice. Man, sweetheart, you you know I care about you. You you know you on the team. You ain't LeBron, but you could be Rodney Hood right now in the starting lineup. Just <laughs> play your position and give me the ball is what I'm saying. You know, she ain't really like that response, but I can't lie and tell you you the starting point guard. You're not. You, you're not the starting point guard. You you literally come in off the bench. I call you when she leaves. It's, <laughs> I told you in the beginning. Oh, my goodness. Okay, oh can you get any colder? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, coach. I'm calling you iceberg from the old. <laughs> wow. No. That's cold, it's, man. It's bad, but it, it, it might be a little cold, just a little chilly. Mm-hmm. But the reality of it is this, though. If I tell you, you don't have the, you don't pay my phone bill. Means you can't tell me who I can and cannot talk to. That means you can't reach for my phone. You ain't pay that bill. Mm. If I tell you who you are to me, I don't care what the street said. I don't care what the blue moon said. Unless it's God Almighty with a red neon sign that said he cheating. If I say I ain't do it, I ain't do it. If I told you what it was, I told you what it was. I don't care. Well, my girl said she saw you with somebody else. What I tell you, me and you was about. Well, you said that we was caring about each other. That's not right there. I don't know what you're still talking for. I told you what your standpoint is with me. Why you listen to anybody else? Hmm. Only thing I can say is game. Definitely recognize game on that yeah. one. He got game. <laughs> um, but again, one of the things I like to say, being a single brother, I will say, uh, being honest also has its fallbacks. So even like we glorify him. Yeah, saying, yeah you, you, you tell them the truth. They already got a, something formulated in their head. Or what they wanted, and sometimes your truth is not their reality. So it still got opposition there. If you're patient like I am, I try to weave some things out, but have a better understanding, but it doesn't make a difference when they are stubborn and they got to see things their way. So again, even though I hit them with the truth, they look at how I treat them. I was never taught to treat anyone bad, right, ever. Right. So if you go by that, what I say would not be interpreted correctly. But I told you on the upfront because I know about my behavior and I know I want to make changes in my life. So if you look at how I treat you, I treat you how I want to be treated. I'm going to treat you great because I expect to be treated great. Right. Great man. I expect a great woman, regardless if it's my queen. People that roll with me going to be in greatness. That's how I operate. So let me ask you gentlemen this. Um, is there ever a time that you tell a woman the truth? And she seems as though she's still no. she's still going to pursue you. She's still going to spend time with you, be with you, whatever the case may be. But you know that it's not for her greater good. And you know that you're not going to really ever give her what she's interested in. Is there ever a time that you yeah. would push her away to protect her from herself? No. To protect her from you? No. I, I, well, what are the things no. about, well, hold on, Jamal, let me go back. Let me go back. I don't push her away just to protect her. I, I have to be honest. 
it, it goes back to my being a good person. If it don't work, it just don't work. Okay? And if it, it don't line up and it's not for us, it just don't line up. But it's not just to protect her. It's more on this table than just her. I'm not just going to give all myself to a person that's just one-sided. It is, I have to have that belief in me. You can't lead me down somewhere that I already know where I'm going to go. And that's the problem with people today. That somebody can tell you they love you and they can drive you down a road that you don't want to go. And you go because you love them. No, I love you enough to know I'm not going there. Okay. So I can't let somebody steer me off my destiny. Right. And a lot of times they don't mean to. They want to see how far they can go. How much love they can get. That ain't the kind of love you want to play with. Because mm -hmm. mine don't play. Right. I'm straight up. And that's why I didn't look at that first. I had to get back to my vision and my purpose. But go ahead, Jamal. I know you over there chopping at the bitch, my brother. Go ahead. Man, I, okay. Have I ever pushed a female away for her own good? Yeah, I, I have. But that's that warning phase. Because I'm a jerk. I'm going to tell you I'm a jerk. So that way when you call me a jerk, it don't hurt. Like, I'm going to just look at you and be like, and you know my middle name. Good for you. Um, I'm pushing you away to protect you. But to protect me, my windows, and whatever possessions I own. Um, that's why I push you away. Um, okay. Okay. Like, I know some females may want super relationship in the beginning. That ain't me. You're not going to get that. Right. So I might be nice to you for the first three weeks, you know, me and you, we rocking how we rocking, whatever. If I see the relationship or situationship, for that matter, is getting a little bit, you know, we going down the deeper waters, I might try to pull out or back out or act like a jerk specifically for you to break up with me. Just because I'd rather let you save face and let you uh tell yourself you, you ended it. Hey, whatever makes you believe happy thoughts, tell yourself you ended it. Okay. If that's what's going to make it work for you. Me, I know what my limits are, what I like, what I don't like, what I can tolerate, what I can't tolerate. Right. So the minute you start pushing buttons and you start doing things that I find to be it was disrespectful or things that I can't ever come back from you with, we got to call it quits. Okay. Not for you. Prevent me from acting like a fool. Okay. Okay. I asked the question because I'm not, um, cause I've, I've, I've been in those shoes many a times, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I will uh, push a woman away if I think that... Um, I don't know, she would waste time with me, that she would um, maybe need something other than I could give her if she's looking for something other than, you know, I want. Um, I think that's a great practice because you create good karma, number one. Right. And, uh, and number two, you really don't set people up to be hurt. Um, you know, it's more important that you not be hurt than for me to get whatever little thing I might need or want in the meantime, and you still get hurt, right? So I'm I'm not interested in hurting people. And so uh, my honesty is always, hey, here it is, here's what it is, and I'm gonna go ahead and take control of the situation so that we don't waste time, my time or your time, you know? Um, you know, in some cases, you may see some things early in the relationship that you say, okay, this is probably not going to work out to be a lifetime relationship, but I'm going to stick around. We're going to have a good time. I'm going to enjoy her, but I'm not going to let her be misled, and I'm not going to let her kind of walk into a brick wall uh, asking me the hard questions because we've been together six months. You know, um, I think that's unfair, and I think that uh, it's a little irresponsible with love, but if you, um, you know, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You die by the sword. And, and I'm going to tell you about that hurt. That's to jump in. Um, sometimes I have to put the hurt in for a reason. I cannot, again, deceive you. So sometimes I have to hurt you by the honest truth. And, that, and the one thing about a lie, most people lie to get you to vision what they want. Okay, right. That's why people lie, because they want to control the situation. A lot of times people tell the truth because now it's in your wrong court. All right? So a lot of times I got to hurt you with the truth. It's right. not the reality to which you see in me. Right. So when I do that, it causes a reaction that normally is not good. But I have to be honest. And at that point, I'm a jerk. It's like going back to what Jamal says. I don't care to be a jerk, but it's sometimes I have to be. Because you cannot lead me. I'm a grown man, and I make good decisions. But I will say, if I don't give you the information on earth, you're going to go down a path 
because you're seeing something other than what I'm saying. Yeah, and, and you two guys are both very much out of the box because people are not telling the truth. No, people say. are leading, you know, people are selling dreams and leading other people down, you know, and saying, that's why they mind, losing, mind losing shafts, windows, losing tires. Yeah. Yeah, and, houses. And, and, and again, and they, leading them down memory lane. Yeah, um, they don't tell you on the up front mm. day one when they meet you. They wait two, three weeks later and be like, "Well, you know, I want to be. I don't want to be in a monogamous relationship. I only just want a friend." When you want to have that conversation is when you first meet this person. But you can't. Then you can. You, you can. You know, no, if I you just can't. met a person, we smash it. I ain't saying <laughs> nothing. <laughs> she should know really? what it is. Really? Can I get? Go ahead, Go ahead man. First thing first, believe it or not, I'm wrong. Because the truth of the matter is, if I'm in the club, whatever, and I'm in the, and I'm dancing, and the young lady doing her little thing on me, if you hit her with the right words, don't say, you coming home with me tonight. But hit her with a sweet one, like, hey, sweetheart, you know what's going to hit Waffle House up this. You know what I'm saying? You know, I got a couple more shots at the crib. You say it like that, she knows what it is automatically. Right. If you say, hey, let me get your number, I want to call you tomorrow. See, you, you get under the impression of talking and communication, and yeah. I ain't mistaken the two. <laughs> if you give a woman the intention or impression that you want to communicate with her, she's going to hold you to the standard of communication. Right. But if you in the club and you dancing and you put your hand on that side, and she's still giving you that look, or you touch her shoulder, and she's still giving you that look, and she come over after 1122. Well, then she know it's physical at this point. Ain't no, ain't no talking about nothing. Right. And, uh, she don't want it either. Yeah. Ain't no confusion or mistaken. And if she hits you with baby, I, I, I want to talk to you. The rule of thumb if I hit it one time, then I like it. If I hit it two times, I'm a piper. If I hit it three times, I'm a white. <laughs> Then they say for the black or the white. I mean, that's the <laughs> Done. I'm so done. Listen, I, I, I listen. <laughs> That's a young man's mind. I'm yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it really is. Man, and and, and, and we, we marvel at it. We remember those, but. You know, we ain't going to clubs no more, and uh, you know we, you know we ain't trying to necessarily pick up one night stands. You know how men are; men always want it. But uh, if you're trying to meet somebody, you know, or if you meet somebody in a club, especially a grown woman, you know, and uh, when I say a grown woman, my age, you know, 40 plus, um, she's a little more cautious. You know, she's got a, she's really not trying to just be picked up. You know, she's not gonna let herself really be put in a position like that. Uh, she wants a conversation, and a grown man, I want a conversation, right? That's going to be the first thing I'm interested in having is a great conversation, right. and I'll know if I want anything else. You may be, again, the finest woman in the world, but uh, if we aren't compatible, then we aren't compatible. And uh, so we are interested in having conversations. We are interested in talking and dialogue, and you really can't be grabbing on thighs too early in the equation <laughs> with a grown woman. Well, I mean, we ain't, we ain't trying to go down trunk line and grab them by the, you know what I mean? So yeah. there's a two-edged sword to that. So if you say it like that, then you also got to say that women, no, every time a man comes up on you, he should not be talking to you with his mini head. That is so true. You are queens. He should talk to you and treat you like the woman that you are. Yeah, right. Um, if he meets you at the bar <laughs> with his alcohol, low lights, and smoke, I'm going to tell you right now, his intention is not to communicate. <laughs> if you meet him at church, Speak for yourself, you have a bro. better conversation of prayer warriors. If you meet him at the grocery store, man, I was doing this rotisserie chicken. Girl, what you put in yours? Right down now, seven. Get her talking. Now y'all good to go. Mm. Tell them what it is up front. Some women don't want to let you think that they going to go down on the first night or some or some buy humbug. You got it. There's some other women out there who don't want to play them games that really are so jaded from their last relationship that they ain't got time for the relationship. They just want you to satisfy a need and keep it rocking. Mm. So basically, we it's up say, to you to decide yeah, yeah. which one she at. And well, for her to tell you which one she at. And that's what we wanted to break it down to. It is. It's about that communication, and you got to have that short talk, even though you said sometimes you know what it is, sometimes you got to back up. There you go. And you got to have that communication. So, go. again, you got anything you got to say real quick? Jamal, we got to get out of here. We got to go to break. You got anything for us as you go out? We got to go to break. Food. 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 Food.
If, if you're going to rock with a female, guys, I promise you, Nat Turner, French JJ Strokes, they got some new techniques. They'll teach you how to work on your breathing. If if you and your woman, y'all y'all playing um, Twister, and midway through the game, you notice her head ain't moving, there's no heavy breathing, fellas, I think it's time for you to dismount, put on an educational video, and follow along and see if that helps you. Because if you don't work on your breathing techniques, she will find somebody that will satisfy her physical need and call you right after. She might call you German. Work on your breathing techniques and educational videos to support you. Uh, I'm, 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 <laughs> hey, what do you want to say? That's that. Great, man. Oh, yeah, what you, play the music. Yeah, okay, man, I'll be right back right after this. Right after this. <laughs> Back with Bar Talk with Jay. Boy, I tell you, that last segment was hot. That boy was crazy. Crazy. I got somebody in my audience said he need a straight jacket. Yeah. <laughs> straight crazy. Straight crazy. So remember one thing it's always about a point of view. Barbara, what we got up next? On the line we have next is Mr. Jeffrey himself. How are you doing today, Mr. Jeffrey? I'm doing very well. What's going on, folks? What's going on, folks? Good to talk to y'all. Hey, we kind of yes, nervous, sir. man. How was your day, bro? Firstly, we need to know, how was your day? <laughs> oh, man, Brother Jay. Uh -huh. They had me working so hard today. It was ridiculous. Oh, they don't get it. Oh, they don't get it. Today. Man, I tell you what. <laughs> I had three training sessions back to back to back, speaking for four hours straight. They tried to rob me of my voice, but they know I had this segment to do, to do tonight. Right. That being said, Brother Kraft, Brother Jay, mm -hmm. you know what time, time it is. is. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Woo. Give it to him. Give it, it to him. It is time for you to close your mouth and listen. You ask me some questions, I give you some answers from a man's point of view. All right. So I got one reason for the hubby to the single woman and one reason for the hubby to the single man as to why they might be single. But before we get to that, here is my disclaimer. Okay. Now, what I'm going to talk about might not apply to you. And if it does apply to you, I don't want you to put your foot up in this shoe. Okay. But if it does apply to you, I want you to put both feet in both shoes and walk around in them because you're going to learn something tonight. Now, ladies, you go first. Ladies, you might be single because you got that Lilith spirit going on in you. Mm. I need you to understand, you got that Lilith spirit. Now, if you don't know who Lilith is, Lilith, uh, according to doctrine and, and religious text and uh, myth and lore, Lilith is Adam's first wife. Mm. And Lilith had this attitude of, Adam, you ain't going to tell me what to do. Her attitude was so strong that she stood up to Adam, and Adam went to God and said, God, I need some help with this one. Mm -hmm. God, can you help me out? And Lilith said, God, you ain't going to tell me what to do either. And guess what God said? What? You ain't going to be around here no more. <laughs> right. You're going to get up right, out, get on right up all out of here. And virtually, Lilith has been erased from the Bible. Now, I want to talk to you about Eve. Okay. Eve stuck with Adam through thick and thin. They went through the highs and the lows together. Eve and Adam stuck together. Don't get it twisted. You can be living all you want. You can stand up to men and God all you want. But Eve had a cooperative spirit. And in the end, Adam and Eve stayed together for a century while Lilith's ass is still single. <laughs> <laughs> ouchie, ouchie, woo, woo. All right. That's some biblical terms right there. Yeah. I heard about that a long time ago. Um, again, um, until you date somebody that got a lot of mouth, <laughs> that has that strong spirit, it, it is something that you have to um, be cautious of. Yes. And you have to um, understand some people's pain, they, they, they show it. But if you can break their shell, you can understand it. Right. So, again, it's, it's what you can do. So, again, I'm with him. It, it can be something that can be make a person single yeah it's you give you but if you're not equipped yeah. for it don't try to act like you're stronger than what you right. are because they will break I'm you know, I, I, never, I never could imagine Adam you know being 
a hard, harsh man, a harsh, harsh husband. Harsh. You know, I you think know, it's he bad was, when a man got to go to so, God. So, yeah, you know, was, I can't <laughs> deal with her. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's bad enough. I gotta pray. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I never, I never seen Adam as the kind of guy to be like, hey, you get in there, get in there, get that done. You know? Come on now, he like, God, you brought this. I mean, he probably. Well, I gotta deal with this. Yeah. You, you, you said if we're gonna be happy. You brought me something that we can't deal with. We can't deal with. I mean, yeah, when he got to go to the Lord, it's. It's trouble on the home help. front. What? <laughs> I can't do. All, right. All right, brother Jeffrey. We don't need no more little spirits, man. Keep on moving. What you got? All right, fellas. So don't think I'm letting you off the hook. Mm -hmm. Fellas, you are next. Brother, some of you might be habitually single because you soft. And when I say you soft, I mean you are a tissue soft. I mean, if something goes on with the car, you don't even know how to check the oil, much less the transit, a transmission. You don't know how to change a damn tire. The sink's been leaking all these years, and you don't know how to go to Home Depot and change out a simple faucet in the bathroom. It ain't even difficult. It won't even take you 10, 15 minutes. Fellas, I tell you this. What a woman needs is not a man that can do every damn thing around the house, but damn it, you better be able to do something before she has to call a technician to do it. At least you know how to go in and do the routine maintenance stuff right. that will keep the bills low. If a tire is flat, you got a tire man that you can take that tire to and get it plugged right. or get a used one, get it replaced until you get the new one. Right. You got to stop being so damn soft. Real story, my daughter calls me when her tires are messed up on her car because I refuse to let her change her tire. Her little friend comes up, nice, respectable gentleman, say, how you doing, sir? I was his name or whatever his name was. And instead of bringing his ass over there and saying, let me help you, he walked over and started talking to my daughter. I said, you need to leave his ass alone. <laughs> I want you to understand something. Fellas, you can't be soft all the damn time. You got to be able to change the tire, fix something, because that woman's thinking in her mind, damn, he can't change my tire? Damn, he can't check my oil? Yes. What the hell I need him for? He's another woman, and his ass needs to be single. Yes, sir, and that's where he going to end up, single. single for a very long <laughs> for time. a very long time. Now, I'm going to jump in and say, that shoe don't fit at all. Okay. But what I will say, watching, and, and what he said was it come to daughters. I got daughters too. Yeah. And when I had a daughter tell me, Daddy, uh, my tire went down, and then my, my check engine light was going, I said, don't you got a man? She was like, yeah, but he was sitting next to me asking mm -hmm. to ask you. And I'm like, Jeffrey, as soon as that car get up, drop his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> because again, you got to make better decisions. Now, you called your daddy. I'm cool with that. But he sitting next to you telling you to call your daddy? Right. That ain't a man. Right. I don't know what you picked up. Right. But drop him off. Okay? Right. right. And I hope he ain't with the kids because I don't need them to realize grandkids don't need to see a soft man. Right. I'm trying to show him a strong one. Right. <laughs> this yeah. ain't good. We ain't working out well. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm of the notion you have to be, uh, you have to be smart or you have to have resources. Now, I grew up in a generation where my dad tried to teach me what's under the hood. You know, I changed some struts and some brakes and changed my oil and I understand the processes and, you know, how it should sound and feel when it drives. But I'm probably not going to lay hands on none of that. <laughs> I'm going to pay somebody to get it done. Uh, but don't, don't think that I couldn't um, Do uh, uh, analyze my air condition in the house. You know, if it's leaking in the house or if it's not blowing cold air or, you know, if there's something going on with my car, I don't know exactly what, you know, what what I need to do in order to get it handled. Uh, but there are a lot of guys who are who didn't get exposed to that. And I think it really takes exposure. If you grow up in a home and around a father who's doing those kind of things, you're out cutting the grass every couple of weeks, every year for, the, for, for your, your whole childhood life. then you learn how a lawnmower works. You learn what edging is like. You learn how to trim a, the trim the grass. You uh you you learn what being a man is like, and and what a man's role is in a relationship. And uh, and I think Jeffrey, you know, really summed it up. We got to get rid of the softness. But how do you get rid of softness for guys who aren't exposed to those things? Her boyfriend is sitting there next to her, uh, his 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 daughter's boyfriend. Uh, he cares about her. But he don't know nothing about changing a tire, which is, you know, which is sad. But he need at least, at least need to know how to call, you know, the the 
the service well, know, to come out and help. Give you don't get a triple A card or something. It's just like what Jeffrey said. Jeffrey's down there doing it. So when you walk up, I'm, I'm gonna give you when you young people up, a little. Look, when you walk up and you see this man doing it, you don't know how. Watch him. Stand next to him instead of his daughter. Right. Okay. You trying to get next to something you already been next to. Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how deep he is with your daughter Jeffrey. I ain't going there. Yeah. But sometimes. Yeah, I ain't like that <laughs> Hey, Jeff, Jeff. You need to delete that one right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I said that. Hold on, hold on. Deep that in there, man. You got a delay on that one. Deep rock, dump that. Hey, I'm just going to tell you, Jerry. I'm just going to tell you. Okay. He, he moved where he wanted to go. But I'm saying, if you'd have moved next to the man that's changing it, if you did nothing more but watch him to see how he can still respect you, because if you didn't know, he's already doing it. Take the effort. To do something different. Yeah. Walking next to her, that can offend him anyway. Mm -hmm. But standing next to him shows respect that I'm trying to be like you. Right. Like minded without knowing you. Right. I'm trying to change the game by what a person <laughs> trying to teach his daughter. I'm showing you how to do it, but he needs to step up and stand next to you and be like, well, I need to learn too. Now you change Listen, the game. That's a that's a lesson. I don't want to be short on the subject, but that's a lesson in salesmanship. That's, an, that's a lesson in knowing when to show that you care, right? Knowing when to uh, act like you are interested, <laughs> right? Uh, and those things matter, right? Um, you know, just like when the, when the, the daughter-in-law comes to uh, you know, comes home with the son for Christmas, and mom's in the kitchen slaving. Now the daughter-in-law might not be able to cook, but she need to be in that kitchen, paying attention, acting like she's interested, helping cut up some onions or whatever the case may be. Um, that's that's a part of showing that uh, that you're interested and uh, not just gonna let me do all the work while you sit over there with no knowledge and no interest in helping. So. Uh, great point, Jeffrey. Great point. Uh, I'm, I don't feel convicted right there. I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not a soft cat. I'm, I'm, I'm in the game on that other stuff. So uh, keep it moving, baby. What you got? Good deal. Good deal. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you this, and I want you to hear me real carefully. We have to be about the business of solutions. I read something on the internet the other day and this young lady was talking about how a Hispanic man that she dated said, I couldn't date this rich girl because that means I couldn't give her the things that she grew up expecting. Why? What kind of man would marry a woman and have her give up the lifestyle that she has? And at the end of it, she said, black women divest now. What in the hell? Divest in what? Are you saying divest in the black man? Now, whether you know your father or not, that was the ultimate smack in the face to every man that's ever been in your life. Mm. Our women and our men have to understand that we can talk about what other races do, divest in this and divest in that, and we can stay stuck on the problem. But when we begin to build each other up with solutions, mm. that becomes an investment. Yes. So for that particular lady that posted that on Facebook, Maybe she needs to divest. Don't get over here and start corralling all these other sisters, though, who <laughs> right. got with a man that might have been struggling a little bit, but he built something with her. Right. It worked for her. It just didn't work for you. So don't cast aspersions, men and women, on each other. Focus on the solutions. And when we focus on the solutions, we begin to find common ground. Once we find common ground, we're standing in the same place. When we're standing in the same place, we start talking to each other. When we start talking to each other, we build solutions. Brothers, that's all I got. And that's all we should ever want from you. <laughs> Lord, have a drop the mic. You do, you, you do great things drop every time, Jeffrey. I yeah. appreciate that, man. Yeah, that's, man. Uh, that's awesome. Man. I, I need to hear from Jeffrey on the subject tonight. Go for it. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, let me just share the topic and uh, let you go in for a moment. Uh, tonight, right. the subject is, a couple has been together five years, and the guy has not proposed. What's likely the issue? Five years, and the guy has not proposed. Yep. Okay. <laughs> now put your seatbelt on. Okay. Um, <laughs> quite frankly, she has not held him accountable for moving the relationship forward. Okay. 
She's uh, just going along to get along. She's scared to say something. And she failed to establish early on that I'm not in this for no casual type relationship. Brother, you got 12 months. Within 12 months, something needs to be happening. If it ain't happening, that means it ain't going to happen with you, but it's going to happen with somebody else. Mm. So that woman in that particular relationship did not hold that brother accountable. And I believe that he's probably just milking it for as long as he can. Mm -hmm. And, uh, boy, that happens so often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happens so often. What's interesting about your point, um, when we started the dialogue, I was always thinking, like, okay, and he, the guy, hasn't proposed. Now I know it's the guy's responsibility to propose, but it seems like it's kind of one-sided. But when you bring in the fact that she has not held him accountable, there is the other side of the equation. And so, yeah, you know, he has to make a move in a certain time frame. And if he doesn't, she has the responsibility to uh, check him, put the heat on him or uh, or just see that he's just full of game and, and turn around and go the other direction. It's hard to leave somebody you love. Uh, you know, it's just like it the, might be hard. Yeah. But some things are necessary. <laughs> some things are necessary. Some, there's no doubt. Can be a jerk. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt about it. But you know, if you love somebody and you know maybe they got a few hang-ups about getting married or just not quite ready for whatever reason, I need to know the reason, but not ready. Um, I only got one. That's all you leave. I ain't trying to be miserable. Okay. Yeah. If you get on my damn nerves and you nag me all the time, right? Well, I ain't married. I don't care five years, four years. I always feel like we can, I love the debate. I love the question. I, I'm the kind of person that I feel like I want to listen to you. But if you keep repeating the same thing over and over and over, it's a broken record. <laughs> yeah. And you think I'm going to marry a broken record because you love me? Listen, right. your love is not understood if you got to keep repeating yourself over right. and over. <laughs> happiness will, lies within me. I'm not giving up my happiness for right. that. Right. Promise you. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Listen, uh, we always appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, brother Jeffrey. Yes, Are there Jeffrey. any parting words for us this evening, sir? Oh man, this is the last thing I got that I'm going to dip on you. It all gets down to standards and expectations. Mm -hmm. Somebody can meet your expectations, but never live up to your standards. Mm -hmm. You have to know the difference between the two and adjust yourself accordingly. That's all I got, brother. Oh, that was smooth. I like that. Uh, that and we gonna use that the rest of what? the show. Because that, you, that becomes you a are not my cool. state. Yeah. And I'm not going to live up to your expectations. <laughs> we're going to change the word and we're going to blame it on Jeffrey. Bye, go. Jeffrey. <laughs> we're going to use you for the rest of the night. All right, fellas. We'll catch you next week. All okay, right, take man. care. All, All right, right folks. We're going to break and we'll be right back with Bart Talk with Jay and again the smooth sounds of Crab Manic and we got AP in the building. Woo! Oh, yeah. If all y'all yeah. just see the step in, we always going to introduce you. How you doing, AP? I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, we doing right? next? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we ready for some more of that pimp to come out. Oh! <laughs> We got, okay, we got Crab Man and Colin are out. We, I, I ain't saying nothing. Wow. Now, now listen, nothing. We, wow. we learned things back last week about women that uh, we just didn't know uh, she, was she, real. But she knows she, she did that WCW, that slap down. Yeah. <laughs> she is the people's <laughs> champ. All right. Now, listen, thank you for being with us. And um, all right, folks, we're going to take another break. We'll be right back after this time. One of those shows that just has so many opinions and uh, so many perspectives on the subject. Uh, that's why we say, you know, everybody's going to grow because uh, you're going to hear something you like, you don't like, something you agree with, you need to align with. And uh, that's what the dialogue is all about. So, before we go any further, go ahead. We got AP in the building, baby. Yeah. Everybody want to know about what AP got to say. So give AP what the topic is. And that way we can find out a woman's point of view. And it looked like it's an all man show. No, it ain't about all no all man. It's about a debate. Okay. Can you really recognize what we're about to do? Give it to a crowd. Okay. Yeah, right. It's all. Here's the question for the night. 
A couple has been together five years. Five years. The guy has it proposed. Mm -hmm. What's likely the issue? It don't matter what the issue is. It took too long. It's time to go. <laughs> she she, she, she not even addressing the issue, right? See, she already got a squad and a team. It's see, already that's a real coach player. That move, time, right? That's a coach player go. move. Is that, is that Mike Bar? Can you turn Mike up a little bit? Five years. She says she out. Can you turn Mike up a little bit? Bing, not, not a little. It don't take a man five years to figure out shit. Right, right. You know, so, don't be so, 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 so what has happened? So, so <laughs> basically, you you already suggesting it's quitting time. Yeah. So what happened? What What's happened in the equation? Two, one, three, one, five, six, one. Um, in a way, I do agree with your boy who called in earlier. Um, I a really good example. I had a girlfriend who. She was dating this dude, and she was really filming. She was like, you know, I'm really filming. She was like, I'm rooting for him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been playing hard. You know, preseason, he did excellent. We in the playoffs, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so um, she was like, but they had gotten into a conversation, and he was like, you know, I'm just feeling stressed. I got this. I got that going on. He was like, I know, you know, me and you've been talking for about nine months, and, you know, I need to make some money to, you know, make some decisions as far okay. as how we go. And so she was like, you know, all you need to know is this. I got a date in my mind. She was like, it's kind of like the second coming of Christ. No man knows the day or the hour, but I have a, I have a date that I've given myself mm -hmm. to just walk away because like, you got to make some moves. And so I, she was like, you know, as long as you know that you're straight. And it is, it's, you know, you know, I tell women all the time, you know, pussy rules the world. Okay. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, hold on. Uh, 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 hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this, yeah. this, this slap is a pop, pop, pop. Oh, oh, okay. 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 This got knocked out, man. Right? I told you. Pussy rules the world. Okay. Well, we're just. Okay. Wake up. Okay. Find another word for it. Yeah, yeah, no, no it is what it is. It's it's no problem. But okay. it's like it's like this. A man would screw you in a cardboard box if you let him. The only reason why men buy houses, the only reason why men buy cars, the only reason why men buy nice suits and buy nice cologne is for what? Because I like to look good. Okay. <laughs> it's for the audience, promise of what? An audience said, uh, meeting her. look good, they don't want to look good. Meeting her, impressing her. No, exactly. It's all about that. Okay. It's all about that. The, the reason why this economy runs is because of that, the promise of that, the prospect of just whiffing that. Yes. Whip, whip. What did she okay. say? Whip. <laughs> and if more snibble, women snibble. walked around knowing that word, a lot of problems would be resolved. A lot of problems would be resolved. Mm. Mm. What's that uh, stuff you stick up your nose? Know, the, the nasal drain? <laughs> got some clogs? Got some drain on? Uh, listen, listen, oh, wow. that, is a, that is an interesting perspective. So, uh, let's, let's take your girlfriend's situation. Mm -hmm. So, she has a date. Mm -hmm. She didn't share it with him. No, it's not his date to know. Okay. It's her date. It's her date. And so, she... She's managing her relationship without him knowing the realities of it. No, he knows the realities of it. Your boy who called in earlier knew y'all know the realities of it. You know if you've been dating a woman longer than 12 months and you ain't trying to make no move, if you don't make the move, somebody else is going to. Yeah. See, you I got five players in the game at any time, and you got a bench. Yeah. You got a, I mean, I'm rooting for you. Right. I want the best man to win. Well, you know, I think let's go ahead and share my perspective. Cause yeah, yeah I mean, we, I, we, we really want to hear right about that. Well, I, I'm in a place in my life where mm -hmm. uh, companionship is important. Mm -hmm. And companionship is never going to, to, to uh, I guess, put me in a place where I have to decide for a lifetime if you're going to be my companion or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That um, a lot of times... I think for the especially for those who've never been married, there's a there's a an excitement about being married. There's a you know there's there's something special about being married, and I believe that you can have a lot of that without being married. And when it's time to get married, then it's time to get married. But if I'm dating you three, four, five years, I'm not just about your sex. I'm about you. I'm about who you are. Mm -hmm. I'm about helping and supporting and loving. Mm -hmm. But 
and, but and and if your need is well, okay, I need the paperwork so I can you know the paperwork will make me feel better. It'll make me feel like you love me. It'll make me feel like uh, you want to be with me forever. It'll give me a stronghold in case you start messing up. It'll you know it'll tie you down so that I can you know get the benefits and of the rewards and all of you know the life insurance and the pension plans and and be, yeah, you yeah, right. Right. So, so, right so 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 the so the so the relationship when the relationship gets to a point where you can't live without that level of uh, commitment yeah then it's time for you to go. Mm -hmm. And um, but see, I just don't. I don't think. See, when I say that you are my lady, in some form, I'm married to you, already, right? In some form, I'm already. I'm already committed to you. Say you his lady. I'm um, yeah, committed. Right. See, so in in my I mean, previous you know, relationship and with my ex, That's right? Awesome. The day that I decided that I was going to marry her, the day that I decided that she would be my wife, mm -hmm. she became my wife. And I didn't need the state, I didn't need paperwork, I didn't need the ceremony, I didn't need none of that stuff. I treated her like she was my wife. She could have anything, do anything, etc. And we were moving towards getting married. Mm -hmm. But let's say, and here's what I think is the issue in the whole issue, is that something happens. Uh, he changes his mind, she changes their mind because they saw something they didn't like. Maybe they, they don't get along. Maybe they're not spending a lot of quality time together. Uh, maybe they got kids and the kids is distracting the love. Uh, maybe somebody's unfocused. They're thinking about the money, the things, and the stuff rather than thinking about being with me together and just having the relationship. They're thinking about the ring. Um, there's so many superficial things that happen, um, I think, that keeps, that keeps people from, from getting married. But I just don't think that marriage is the end-all, be-all. I think the, 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 the companionship is the end-all, be-all. Um, but if you need the things and stuff, then you just got to fight for a marriage. So if you got a drop dead date and you're dating me and I don't know what your drop dead date is and I hit, I hit the statute of limitation, then probably my mindset going to be like, hey, if you got to have it that way, then you probably need to go on. Because here's one thing we know for sure is that, um, you know, it's like when, you, when, when you're looking for another job and your boss figure out you're looking for another job. And then he, he gives you a raise to stay. That's only temporary, right? You get the raise to stay, but you're really not happy. So you probably need to just go, right? What they call them counter offers. Counter offers are not successful. They're only temporary, and they only fix the problem for a short term. Uh, so I think any relationship that gets to a point where there's pressure for a marriage or there's pressure for a certain type of commitment Everybody's already aware. It's not going there. It's not well, going there. Everybody isn't aware. They've been together for five, five years. years. <laughs> five years. And they don't it know. It take nobody five years to figure out nothing. nothing. Right. Because they're not right. headed for marriage. No, they were no. just together. <laughs> Let me get point. back to that five years. Let me get back to the five years. She might not have been pressing in the five years. You know, you gotta remember some people right. in a relationship, they don't even look at marriage. Yeah. They, they start off just dating, they start off in a relationship, it was never really serious. And then all of a sudden you find this person growing you. Next thing you know, y'all compatible, but you got some issues. Mm -hmm. So you never really looked at the marriage. He really wasn't married from the beginning. But you know something? I'm starting like I'm starting digging so you can grow together. So it could be a lot of time together, but that was not the whole basis of the relationship. Right. It never was I seen him for a husband. Remember, you said a woman can finesse. If you wasn't really finessing him to be anything great, you was just calling him over, and he was satisfying the need, okay? And so, then all of a sudden that need became into a position where he became a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Then you got to change position, so you can't count all the time. No, no, no. So the way I read this, when you say a couple, a I couple. mean, this is, this is a couple who have decided to be monogamous, to be exclusive. Right. Right. Exclusive. right. right. So if we have been all of this for five years, five years. you know, that's a problem. You know, now what, the scenario that you're talking about is, this is a dude, I'm just dead. This is a dude, you're dating. 
That's what I'm saying. Just a new thing right. because I got to give something out the box to give right. the conversation a little bit of feed. Because it's yeah. five years, you're going to be my lady. You know, five. Absolutely not. You got, I, I, no, no. You can have a maintenance man for five years, yo. You can have, look. Well, that ain't being together. That's a maintenance man. All right. Yeah. But that's, that's a good that's position. Somebody, that's, on your <laughs> that's a good position. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. All right. And every team needs that <laughs> position. For yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I, it's I'm like, applying for that position one right. time. Right. And here's the thing. That's not going to carry you to matrimony, though. It won't carry. Hey, but I tell you what, it'll get you far. <laughs> it might get you a couple wins. It might not get you the series, but it ain't get you there. No, this time to tell you. You need some ready. players. Go ahead. No, but there is, there is. But if this, if we are talking about that this is a genuine couple who has been a couple for five years, mm -hmm. no, dude, it's time to go. It's a wrap. I mean, I mean, if, and I, what I'm saying is, and I'm and I'm not advocating marriage or anything like that. What I'm saying is, there needs to be a conversation. What are we doing? There you go. What are we doing? That's a break. But that, like that. That, that's let's unpack this. What are we doing? But that's no. going to probably happen long before five years. Clearly not. Somebody <laughs> complaining. They've been together for five years, and you ask, "What is the issue?" So you're 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 making it seem like there's an issue with the fact so they've been together for five years, and he ain't did nothing. So, so what if they've been anything? together for five? Because I know a couple that's been together for nine, but they haven't talked about marriage. They don't go outside the box, mm -hmm. and they work together as a unity. If that works right for them, yeah. that works look, for them. That works for them. Yeah, and that's what the conversation really has to come to. It's where you are. Right. It's where each of each there person is. For everybody. Because um, my father um, has a special lady in his life who's been there, been around for twenty years, right? But he was married, raised his family. She was married, raised her family. All the family's gone. They hook up, and they have their own this and that. But they spend all their quality time together, the whole family knows her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, marriage to them means nothing, mm -hmm. right? In fact, it might mean more hardship than anything because it starts to force things, you know? Mm -hmm. They see each other two, three, four times a week. They have dinners together and cook and they travel and, and uh, you know, they just have a fabulous relationship and it's been like that for years. Now, they haven't even discussed marriage because it's not important. Mm -hmm. But if somebody today started saying, what are we doing here? Now you going to damage relationship. Because you're gonna, I ask a question, if you don't get your soft ass out of here, nigga, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> no, no. Stop no, playing. No, I'm like, like, what no, are we doing? Are we going to be cut for the, the next baby. five years? Or are we trying to march towards something yeah, more serious? And yeah. if so, okay, then let's go ahead and get, if marriage isn't for us, let's go ahead and get a partnership agreement. That's just a prenup for couples who ain't getting married. It's like, look, anything we acquire in business during this union, we're going to split it this way and that way. You do everything like that. Let's keep it moving. But what are we doing? If I can suck your dick, you can and you can answer my question about what the fuck are we doing for what? the next five years. Right, but don't sweat me 15 years later. You should have asked me that two, three years into the relationship. I don't want to hear that stuff 15 years later. I want you to say it when you need to say it. If you need to do be gone, be gone. But don't be sweating me and calling me soft because I ain't trying to marry you 15 years down the road because I ain't talked about it, ain't wanted it, don't need it. What, what we got is perfect. It's wholly complete. If I die, you in my will, but you ain't getting a marriage certificate, and that's just how it is. Don't act like you're going to be brand new 15 years later. Come with it strong from the front. Hold on, hold on. That's what I'm saying. We got to go to break because this is how we do. You know what I'm saying? Part of the kids, we're going to have a debate. And it's going to bring you guys into a discussion. Now, see, one of the things that we're doing tonight, please understand, we want you guys to sit at y'all table and have this discussion because the bottom line, five years. Could be too long, but the bottom line is if it's five years and you have not even thought about it. Right. She did bring up some things that you might want to think about. Right. Thinking your things in line. We don't know where you at. Yeah. So our whole thing is to give you a bigger picture. And you gotta figure out where you at in that picture. That's exactly and make sure you're in the picture. Because I'm hearing some people out of the picture. And they think they're in the picture. Okay. I don't know about a, a, a Mona Lisa. If she was by herself, that's probably your ass. <laughs> so figure out. Don't paint a picture by yourself and you expecting to be with somebody. And and we gon we need to clarify <laughs> the time frame of <laughs> asking oh, these so questions. So we'll do that. We'll do that. <laughs> Five years is too far uh, to ask the question. Uh, you need to ask, uh, you need to ask you it in thirty, 30 days, thirty months, <laughs> thirty weeks, thirty years. You know what I'm saying? That is your question. We gonna figure it out. <laughs> we gonna talk about that later. <laughs> Smooth <laughs> sounds and crash back. We <laughs> be back. Yeah.
Oh, we got it hot tonight. My goodness, only thing I can say is the person that looked like him does not him even have to come back on the line. He he had some issues tonight with this. He said we got a debate going on. So anybody at home, please understand this is a debate. We're we're not in an argument form, and we don't want you guys to argue. But if you do not understand, if you don't have a dialogue, you don't have a plan. Right. I want y'all to have a plan for your life because I want you to be more happy. Happiness comes when you come with a plan, but you have an understanding where you at. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know where you at, but we want to find you tonight, and we going all over the place. Crab went his way. AP Dang Show went her way. <laughs> and Jamal, <laughs> you probably going to get me fired. <laughs> I'm the damn CEO. I'm fired. <laughs> because of my man just going, play a play a stop. Jamal, what you got now? So, sweetheart, let me let you kick it off a little bit. So, you said Bray ain't got no time to tell you how long he got to wait to figure this out, huh? He right. needs to know. Right. Right. He needs to know? He needs to know. The, the honest opinion on that um, is that most dudes will know who they want to marry within the first 10 seconds. Just like, y'all know if y'all going to give us a woman in the first five. There's certain females that we can look at you, dot it up, and be like, she ain't me and my mama. That's you know real. That? I mean, that's, that's, that's completely. You'd be like, nah, that, that, I might have to go ahead and keep her. Like, there might be a female that come around that I know for certain every man that did this that you done met her and then you done called your homeboy and like, bruh, I, man, I done got me well, bruh. She, right. She like, oh, girl, bruh, she, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and keep that one. I ain't even trying to smash. I'm going to talk to her. Right. Like, we know. So when right. a dude holds out on you and he don't give you that information, it's not because you don't want to, it's because of what you allow. And if you don't allow him to understand this, a time frame, then sweetheart, don't get it twisted. I love the time and connection hell. Then, you know, the, the, the twisted technique may even be great or whatever. But if you don't put the time step on it, you're going to get like five minutes, man, like molding out of date. We ain't even going to put you on the scene. Okay. Okay. In other words, okay, well, women, we if a man ain't frame. proposing, <laughs> right. you know, we did say that was a time frame. Okay, but they, 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 she, she said, she said that she put a stamp on it, but it's in her head. But it's a stamp on it, and and how you gonna deal with that stamp on it, player? Are you gonna the, add up, measure up? Or you gonna equate out? I'm just wanting to say, how you gonna handle this situation when you know that stamp is on your back, player? Mm -hmm. Don't get quiet now. This but time is top Wait, say that again? When you know it is a stamp, they gave you a date. Your date Jamal, you got May 25th. May, there you go, May 25th. You got to make a decision. What you going to do? I got to think about this. May 25th. All right, so that makes the same time. All right, so three months before that. So you was with him during cuffing season, around September, October time, right? All the winter was falling. and this, How long y'all been together? Just say a year. About a year. About a year. One year. All right. In a year, you can't put the marriage title on in a year. Here's why. Most men know we got the 90-day rule. 90-day rule ain't got nothing to do with sex. 90-day rule got everything to know is we showing out. This is the best me you will ever see. This might be the worst <laughs> for me you will ever see, but whatever it is, it's a show in the first 90 days. Okay. After them three months, now you got to deal with the game. The game is who this man or woman is that they have tried to withhold from you. See, there's the show. Now there's the stuff that, you know, you ain't even really seen that about her. Wait a minute. She really do be passing gas for her sleep. And don't say, excuse me, rudeness? <laughs> I got to my mouth out before she tried to kiss me. Wait a minute. It was cute the first time. No, nah, man, you had to get the hell out of my bed. Like, it's, so there's that time frame. And then don't forget, there's that time frame where y'all arguing. Where it's like legit, y'all bumping head to head because somebody from your past done popped up. Or too many exes, and, you know, they're trying to show too much love. So there's that time frame in every relationship. A year is not a sufficient time to say this man or this woman is worth marrying. It mm -hmm. takes nine months to give life. It takes more time to go through a divorce than it do to give life. Mm. And more of a headache. I say wait. I'm not saying get a man five years. Five years is abundantly too much time. Way too much time. But you get that man two years of some change. That's two pops. You know what I'm saying? Now he got time to say, hey, baby, you know, we done worked it, we done kissed it, mushy and all that other stuff. It's great. 
What's up, though? You know, it, it, it's enough time with the games now. Now you should have your stuff together and say if you want to be with me or not. Otherwise, I got John right down the street, and his twisted technique works a little bit differently than yours, man. Mm -hmm. And if so, you don't want to answer the call, then I tell you, it's not somebody that's me, but he looks like me, that will gladly step right in while old boy messing up. And I smile the whole way. I mean, somebody I know will smile the whole way through servicing the me, is what I'm saying. Right. Now, so you say two years. He said two years. He said two and, years. And I'm going to tell you all day long. I said top. I said top. He said top. 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 Two okay. Years. Okay. And they get two years. I mean, really, there's going to be a discussion between the people. Because again, I like to say, like she said, it's a timestamp that people are, are, are female. What I like about one, one of the things she said, and one of the books that uh, I looked at, it was Pastor Anthony's, a woman who the evil effect. A woman had the woman uh, the power to finesse. Right. Well, when a woman know her greatness, and she brings it to the table and she applies it, he will respect it and grab it. So her timeline, nine times out of ten, will be achieved. You cannot listen to somebody tell you something and you don't know that process. And that's what I feel like might happen tonight because she said they put a time stamp in their head. But you got to put your best on the table. Okay? Right. Because if you see the best in a person and you're going to sway him to greatness and you ain't putting but mediocre on, don't put a date on nothing. You ain't bringing nothing. Don't expect too much. But my whole thing is when you go for that you're going for the gold, okay? That's called an investment. And that's why they got prenups and everything else, because it's a heck of an investment. When I am finessing you from something you can't even see. Right. But when you got a man that has it in him, and you grab it and you want to, then you got to make sure you play your part to keep him focused. Mm. Now, that right there would get him to see you for your greatest potential. Because it, the bottom line, it is a game, but you've got to understand how to play it. Because when you play together, you win together. Your goals can be my goals when you grow with me, play with me. But when we play in separately, we don't play well. And that's what happened in the sandbox right now, today. Yeah. What's going on today? We playing selfishly. We ain't playing together. The MVP ain't playing with the rest of the team. So the rest of the team no, will get bitched because you got a one team player. Yeah, you're not gonna win the you, series. You know, um, you know one of the uh, one of the sad realities of marriage is that so many of them fail, right? And uh, give me and, a reason why. Yeah, and I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't. You, you don't want to put yourself in the shoes of all of these failures, but uh, but there's there's something going. And even the, the fifty percent of the people who do stay married, half of them aren't happy. <laughs> right, so now you got a small right. percentage of people that are happy, and um, and I have always asked myself the question, like like, you know, how do you entertain someone who you know you're not going to even know them in 20 years? You're not going to know who they are. You'll know their needs and their wants, and you'll know things and that. But you know, we we know 20 and 30 year marriages where the the spouses are just really understanding their spouse. And the spouse was up to no good and was, you know, was out to be selfish and have his way and all that, you know, going to blow the money or was a gambler or want, want to always right. argue. And so you just be afraid to give your whole life to something that you're just not okay. sure about. It's not that you may not want it, but you may have some fear. And I'm not making any excuses up because it's real and it should be real because uh, if you go in not thinking clearly or if you go in without certain facts, uh, you're going to wind up having to start over. Actually, you're going to wind up having to break up before okay. you start over. Well, Jamal, what you got? Give it to us real quick. politically correct right now, and I don't understand it. Like, Bo, you right. If, if you don't know why you in the game, it, you can start playing and everybody else ain't going to work out. First thing, I think a lot of marriages fail simply because you don't even know why you're marrying the person you with. Right. Other than just being together, why did you marry this person to say you did it? Because I see them 20 and 30 year relationships. I mean, take them offensive by August Wilson. I mean, you got a character like Troy Mackin who cheated on his wife, but every day he took the manhood and responsibilities of going to work, making sure his kids were taken care of, trying not to let them go down the same road that, you know, he went into. 
these are things that we grow up in our culture learning what manhood is and the struggles that we have. Mm -hmm. How do you present a woman to you? Or how is a woman presented to you? Or how do you present yourself to a woman if you genuinely don't know why you want to be with her? Mm -hmm. If you aren't willing to argue with that woman, she's not for you. I, I, I really believe that. Mm -hmm. Because there's a healthy way of arguing with the woman you love. Or right. a healthy way of arguing with the man you love. Right. And if you can't do that effectively, then why be with someone that you know you can't go through hard times with? Right. Right. That's the reason right. right. that marriages don't hold on to. Because if every time we go at something, no excuse is to run or to dip out, let me help you out. Don't find that clean up. Let me get everything you got because I know you're going to run. Let me just go ahead and talk to my dollars. <laughs> this will be a little short time. Yeah. And That's how hustles will look at you. And that is, that is a point um, that it takes, and it's going to take some time to figure out if you can have a, a major disagreement and find a way to work through it or talk through it. Um, before, you know, and yeah, that's something very important it you is. need to know before you... We got to go to break. Out. It is, but I'm going to tell you one of the things that, that I, I, I deal with, I deal with all the time because, you know, me being a single brother, I like to date, and I don't like to be in a monogamous relationship because, again, I like to be real. Um, why getting myself in something that I know I've been through a lot in the past and I want to make some changes in my life, so why give myself just to one person when I feel like right now that's not for me, okay? So you got to know you first. Mm -hmm. Now secondly, after you know yourself and you respect yourself, you got to respect others. Right. Okay, so now I'm changing the game because again, this is something that's not always taught. It's mm -hmm. something I had to learn. Right. Now one of the things I like to tell you is when you get into a situation, and you look at women, and we are, a lot of times, we talk about finesse to greatness. We also disrespect. And if you into a situation, and a person is disrespecting or giving up on you, you got to ask yourself, why are you continuing to? Because one of the things I have a problem with is when a person tells me, if you keep doing this, I, I'm going to leave you. Right. Okay? At leave. this point, Bye. we might as well separate okay because you already let me know and again if i did something to totally go against her morals then she just need to walk away in the first place don't don't threaten me just do what you need to do because i really feel like i should not ever done that just period but sometimes people got to put boundaries up and i understand the boundaries but when you give me a boundary then let me know about a defeat i am a person that conquers i'm not looking for a defeat so when you telling me you're going to leave me I'm already looking for another teammate. Mm -hmm. All right? I checked out when you still playing. Now you're playing by yourself. I don't want people to keep playing by themselves because you checked me out. I was in it to win it until right. you checked me out. It's your mouth. It's your words. Because I have an ego. It's the way you handle me. It's the you, way you address me, right? You address me with a disrespectful tone and manner where I feel like it is hitting my ego. I promise you. I'm checking out, and I still be there because I'm a respectful brother. But I promise you, I'm out. Right. Now you would be right. like, why it took so long? It didn't take long at all for me. It was because of you. You helped me understand, and that's why I was in it so long. I'm not quick to make a decision, but I will make a decision because that's what I do. But if you give me facts to make me feel like you won't be there for me, don't don't worry about me. Yeah. You keep on sending me a text message that's cute about what you ain't gonna do. I promise you, what you ain't doing, all you gotta do is come to my house unannounced. You will see somebody else. Cause I promise you, I'm not out to play. And that's what most men are. But we have to get into a better form because I would've never thought she would even come at me like that. But she get with her committee, her friends. Oh, you need to do this because he ain't acting right. Well see, if you would've gave them, your friends the whole, they would've never told you that information. They don't know me, but I promise you, they will see me. Right. Answer All right. That. <laughs> Answer that. And uh, folks, let's take another break. Uh, this will this will this will be our last break for tonight. But uh, stay tuned with us. We'll be right back with more bar talk. <laughs> I 
and the hope is to get a woman's perspective <laughs> on these. You subjects. got one that I think you really knew it was gonna be. This I did. Way. I'm I'm quite taken back actually, but uh, I'm loving it. it. But, but this, yeah. <laughs> me too. Me too. I found out what's in this, my wallet. <laughs> this show is uh, for all of those folks who uh, who need some inspiration in the way of relationships. And, and there are a lot of people, I'm sure there are a lot of people listening to this show, maybe now, maybe 20 years from now, who are hoping to have a lifelong relationship, who are hoping to get in a marriage, and who may have been dating for somebody for a, a year, five years, 15 years. Um, I'm hoping all of this is adding value and uh, giving you some clarity, because if you're in a relationship that's going nowhere, it's time to make a move, unless you're settling for a relationship that's going nowhere. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just ain't, it ain't going to matrimony, but you know, I got somebody to hang out with, somebody to talk to, and you know, maybe we call that settling. Uh, in my world, I call that enjoying the now and uh, enjoying the companionship, right? Uh, but I really want to hear your comment again. I think our audience needs to hear I don't know, they're the ready perspective for of a woman, right? I mean, because, you know, the reality is that people aren't telling the truth. That's people right. aren't coming forth saying, hey, you know what, I used to want to marry you, I don't want to marry you no more. Let's just stay together and hang out. You know what I'm saying? We got a couple of bills together, we got a couple of kids together. Ain't nothing wrong. What's wrong? We can go on another trip every year if you want to. Let's just kick it. People aren't having that conversation. Mm -hmm. They're avoiding the conversation and time just passes by. That's the reality of what happens. But here's what women may be thinking when they meet you or um, as you're you're trying to get involved in, please, please go ahead. And, and say please TV. make sure you get the kids away from the dang old TV. <laughs> <laughs> the TV AP is just yeah, on the real. Go ahead, AP. Ain't no need to change or nothing. We love um, it. So no, what I, basically what I was saying was that, you know, just because, like, in 2018, I need everyone to understand that as a woman, um, I may genuinely be looking to get into a relationship, whatever that is, a super significant relationship, whether that's marriage or just partnership or whatever. Okay. But at the same time, I still will have a maintenance man. I still will have that dude that I get ready to just cuddle and binge watch on Netflix. I'll have that dude too. And I'll have the dude that I jet sit around the country with and he do blah, 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 whatever, whatever, my sugar daddy. But at the same time, I can genuinely still be looking for a significant relationship like we multitask very well yes you see what i'm saying yeah. so like don't think that just because i'm looking for to fill that position as far as my mvp that top spot that that's my dude that's my boo that's my man i still at the same time may be looking to replace my maintenance man so how about we have you interview for both positions and see which one you you fall into right oh. that's what i'm talking that that is what you oh, need to understand and listen here's what happens here's what happens you, be, you, you meet somebody, they're special, you have a great time together, you start to enjoy one another, love one another, etc., etc., etc. As time passes, they have put you in another segment. They used to put you in a segment where like, okay, you could be the one, you're going to be Mrs. Right, mm -hmm. but now you're in a segment two, three years later, you're, you've been positioned in a place in their mind and heart that you're not worthy of marriage. Right. You're not eternal. You're not... Right. Uh, Mrs. Wright or right. Mr. Wright and so um, what happens is you you actually are applying for several positions and then you get one and you might not know which which position you got but uh, but you you somewhere in that person's life so and I think that happens a lot mm -hmm. people change their mind and they don't communicate it and they keep whatever they can get out of the relationship they keep it if, so you if, settle instead of just having balls and just being like what are we doing absolutely Absolutely, and and I mean, how many times do you do you know of a woman um, who just enjoy the fringe benefits of having a man in their life, and the man might just be using her, he might just be hitting it every once in a while, he might come over and fix the fix the thing and and take her out every once in a while, but he's he's not going to marry her, <laughs> right? Um, and she settles for that. Mm -hmm. She's okay with that. Sometimes, and I, all too much lately, I'm hearing about women that, hey, I'm okay with being the side chick. I'm okay with um, with you having some other person in your life because mm -hmm. just give me what I need and mm -hmm. go home. Mm -hmm. Just give me what I want and stay away or, or you know, whatever the case may be. Just keep it um, light and fluffy. Yeah, but 
Um, but, like but, but you are no longer in a in a place in that person's life where they're going to even consider you for a lifetime relationship. Um, that's how those relationships. When you said when we ask the question, what's likely the issue? The issue is they've changed their mind. They didn't communicate it, and they're just getting out of you what they can. They maybe maybe just good company. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want to have to go through meeting someone new. Okay. So that Hold takes me back to my first point of women having a date in their minds. Mm -hmm. See, you just, you out of your own mouth, what did you just say? A person will use you. They'll just stay out of convenience. That's right. But if you got that date yeah. there, and it's not his date, it's your, your date, date as a woman. Right. I have self-worth. Right. It's only so many times I'm going to let you see and <laughs> reap some of the benefits of what it would, could be like. Yeah. If I decide to forsake my father's name and take on your last name. Right. Because remember, I'm the prize. Right. It's not the man. Keep your last name. Okay. I have a father who provided my last name, and it's an honorable last name. Right. So before I even consider forsaking that name for yours, you have to prove that it's worth doing that. There you go. Okay. That's Hence agree, that man. day, and that's my day. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I really like that but it, but that no guy guy. may not ah! be interested in matrimony oh, no. but he couldn't be there as long as he's been there that's if he's fine. not treating no. you right that's no, no. You, you, you're not going to run from Correct. something Correct. to nothing he's going to be treating you right what if he you keeps you, if, if he keeps you a couple of years men have filet mignon all the time and they go and and freak the hood rat the the, the walmart Ooh. register bitch who ain't never been outside of 285 because it don't be about the filet mignon. See, that's the surface mm -hmm. of it all. No. He might have the most mm -hmm. beautiful thing in the world, but he don't no. like her. She can't no. respect him. It's she don't. They problem. don't. Have, they don't get along. They sometimes don't talk. People just ain't. Sometimes you ain't ready for for, for, for filet mignon. And then you sometimes go. your palate. Got sometimes you are you're stronger than Perhaps. Perhaps. what you've been developing where you are at. Perhaps. But you also gotta understand we all develop differently, mm -hmm. and you gotta understand where your significant other is at. And again, pressure is not always the key. One of the things I love about it is finesse. Yeah. If a woman can finesse a man to greatness, he understands it without feeling pressure. Right. One of the problems of the day, some people are putting pressure on things because they feel like, you know, I'm getting up this age. Don't give up that quality, like you said. Don't forsake your name. Mm -hmm. Live your life by what you was taught. See, what's happening, we're watching too much TV, mm -hmm. okay? And you're starting to see what other people, and I, I want this, I want that. That's not for you, and I really like to say TV is taking your mind. You need to get back into what you're raising. What do you really want? Because I don't think you're really happy because you're seeing other people, and that's making you a semi-false happiness. Mm -hmm. That man should not live up to a dream of your false happiness is back to your morals. When you get back to your morals, you won't let a person disrespect you, but you'll let them disrespect because I'm watching it. When you start to watch what's not to be, so my whole thing is getting back to you. And when she spoke about her father not forsaking a name because of the greatness of where I came from, is a queen. Queen knows where she come from. And a king will recognize. When she spoke, I listened. It's like E.F. Hutton. When you cannot speak power in your words, how you expect to get a king? Because I promise you, hood rats can't catch me. They can mess with me. <laughs> oh, all day long. Oh, they can mess with me. All right, I'm just saying. Right. We all know they can mess with me. Right. They just won't be able to attain me because I'm going to tell you all day long. They won't captivate. Sex don't captivate me, my brother. I tell you all day long. My mind and understanding and the finesse of where I'm going and what I'm trying to do and finesse me into my greatness is something I'm trying to hear. Not what you're trying to do. So, what you want and what I need is two different things. If you can't complete it, we won't be together. I yeah. promise you, the problem of the day is I got used to how it feel. I know where I'm going. Right. Now, um, I, I'd just like to get some insight from uh, the ladies in the studio. Ooh. And uh, this is just an opportunity for men to grow and maybe be humbled. Uh, but listening. Mm -hmm. what is what are women? I mean, this could be an easy question to answer. I doubt it. What are women looking for? You know that. I mean that that varies from woman to woman. I mean, that's a, that's talk a about very, you. That's a, <laughs> oh, Lord. we talking about the MVP coach. <laughs> she ain't normal, bro. Yeah. 
Yeah, ain't normal. Oh, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm about to tell you this. This, this is about to get real interesting, y'all. I mean, it could be an easy answer. It could I be a. Com- it. it could be a common answer. We talking about AP? Shit, ain't normal. AP, what what you? Coach what are you looking for? I mean, what would that man be like? Who is Mr. Right for you? Like, what what is what, you know? What's going on with that? Um. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna personalize it. I think I, I can generalize here and just say, you know, number one, women are looking for a true partner. Um, and when I say partner, I'm not saying like 50-50, you know, when it comes to everything, the stereotypical when it comes to everything. You know, being a black woman, you go out and you're a, a, a boss in whatever you do. Just from being a black woman in America, that's something that you have to be. Otherwise, this monster will eat you alive. Right. So when you come home from being a boss all day, we want to bow down to someone who is worthy of being a king. Okay. And okay. Just, just pause Just pause there. See lie. Okay? Because... Yeah. There's power in those words. You can't, as a man, say you want a boss by your side and then get your feelings hurt and start tucking your tail when a boss calls you to a table, to the table and says, you ain't handling the finances right. You need to hand that over here. Because another boss for the, for the sake of the kingdom will put his ego aside and say, you know what, boo? For the team. For the team. You take You got it. it. But no, I got a tip top tip. I, you want me to tiptoe around the yeah. house that I'm paying the mortgage on because Ain't to no save tip. your ego while I watch you piss this money away? I'm not busting my ass in corporate America or being an entrepreneur and bringing money home for you to piss it away. Right. Ego don't get busted. Right. If it's the truth. If it's the truth and if it's and right and truth if it's delivered pin. in the right way. You exactly. can't come in and say it exactly how I said it. If you yeah. came disrespectfully, you can say, Look, boo, it'd be a problem. You know, I you know, I trusted you with this. And you didn't come right with it. At that point, I if have, you would to, be, what I would have you? to bow down. Now see when I bow down, I don't bow down to my kingship. I bow to my queen. Right. Because at that point she earned her position to let me know we're not gonna fail. We have to be a winning team. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not doing good at something, my queen need to step up. But if she's willing to let us fail, that ain't a person that I would want on my team. Thank because you. that's what typically so happens. You want a yes man. Because you want to surround yourself with yes men. Oh, whenever you, you want it, baby. Who are you? When Trump? Whenever you want it. Come on. Just grab it. But you can't withstand the I pain. Mean, that, that Walmart registered chick who ain't never been outside of 285. She'll be there you, for you. Everything you do will be the best thing since last spring. But will you ever make it out the hood? I'm no. just asking you questions. But the bottom line is how to make mm-hmm. it out is to change your mindset and understand what you have in front of you and deal with it accordingly. Mm-hmm. A lot of times you go back to bad behavior, so, bad results. But the bottom line is quit judging by what you've been through. Learn from it's not to judge others, it's to teach. So again, if I was taught about the hood rats and I was taught about bad behavior and I learned from it, why would I treat somebody so poorly that I care for? And you would learn the problems of the day contest problems because of the bush, the bull. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah. just stop the bull and let's get back into the game. Yeah. Because I like to say, we ain't been playing right, but let's, let's play better. If we play better, mm-hmm. then we get that, that back to that care that I told you in the beginning. The care comes out of me because of the love that's in me. But quick lead with, with what's in you. I lead with the simple, the care. Yeah, and, and let me just, uh, I just want to point this out, uh, just based on uh, AP's comment here a moment ago. Um, there is potentially um, a man or a woman, college degree, successful, working in corporate America, meets a really good person working at Waffle House, Walmart, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes you can have a great relationship, but that person might not feel like you are long-term potential because mm-hmm. you're not kind of on their level in that way. Mm-hmm. And so now we we're we're now having to, I guess, determine whether love is possible because of where a person is in the status of their life. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they're broke, you know, do they have the ability to get back up and come be kind of where I am? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to always have to carry this person? Uh, am I going to always have to be, you know, the, the knowledge in the house? Am I going to have to always be the decision maker in the house, et cetera, et cetera? And do I have somebody who's just going to be a follower? Or do I have somebody who's going to help run the household with me? Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, it depends on how you came up, what your needs are, what you want, what you don't want. But um, mm -hmm. not just... So, in other words, I bring this up because it's not just about companionship and love. Mm -hmm. Now we got to dissect the person and determine, hey, do they know how to act around other kings and queens? Mm -hmm. Do they know what real prosperity looks like? Would they be holding my future back because I had to spend 10 years developing them to get where right. we need to be together? Uh, are they going to ever be bringing new ideas to the table and inspiring me? Or am I always going to have to be uh, that, that role in the household? Those are things that will cause people to not marry you. Mm -hmm. And to not ask for your hand in marriage or not even commit to a long-term relationship. Um, but it all comes down to what's important to you. Mm -hmm. What works, what doesn't work. Throughout the history of mankind, we've seen it all. Right? Um, but if you don't make the decision about what you want, like right now, when the perfect time happens, that perfect person comes about, the situation is right, or perhaps the situation is wrong, you're not gonna make, be able to make an effective decision. And that's what this show is about. This is designed to be a mirror for you to look in, whether it's your past or your future, but you gotta make clearer decisions about how you're gonna manage relationships, particularly long-term relationships, most importantly, marriage in this case. Um, if you wanna be married, don't spend time with somebody who doesn't wanna be married. Um, you're going to be wasting your time. You're not going to change people. You're not going to change their mind. They might see the value in you, but if that's not where they are when you meet them, more than likely they're not going to change to become that while you're with them. So um, just some words to the wise, folks. Uh, get clear about what you want. Mm -hmm. The rest should fall into place. And on that note, only thing I can tell you again, a tragedy, Bill Cosby has been convicted. Now one Man. of the things I want to say on that conviction is please, why don't y'all please take a moment and remember he did some things that is honorable um, a lot the, of the Cosby things. shows Fat Albert mm -hmm. um, what he got convicted of I'm not gonna comment on I'm, it's not for me to judge ever but what I can say is he tried to bring us together in a way that my show is designed after I seen the Cosby show and we need to have a dialogue and we are respectful and we can do it yeah just as great um, what happened to him on the back end I don't want to tank what he tried to do for us to come together. Mm -hmm. So again, a day of, okay, that happened. Right. But to me, he gave us something that we need to go from. It's just like going forward uh, from the Martin Luther Kings, the Malcolm X. You, you keep looking for the heroes, the heroes lie within you. Mm -hmm. What happens behind closed doors, you will never know, but we all been through something. Yeah. And we ain't perfect, but can we get better? And that's what starts with a good dialogue. And quit playing and acting like it's not. And acting ludicrous yeah. when we need to act more civil. Yeah, and, and let me just, uh, just plant the seed before we go. Uh, I think it's important, especially at this turn of our world, um, that we separate the man from his accomplishments. Um, we're all just people. We all make mistakes. We do some dumb stuff. Some people do some really dumb stuff. Uh, some not caring stuff. Some harsh stuff. Uh, and I might be the greatest, you know, engineer in the world, right? And I might engineer something that saves millions of lives over time. But I'm still a man. And that's what happens in this situation. Bill Cosby had a great career. He brought he brought forth a vision uh, in entertainment and in TV that we can all aspire to and we can all get something from and he, he just brought the nature of black families into the world's eyes uh, through his shows and his comedy but he did a very bad thing and um, you know I, I oftentimes don't share my opinion but he deserved to be punished for what he did if that was your daughter or your mother or your auntie or your family member you would think the same thing he needs to be punished for what he did and, um, you know, hopefully he's right with Lloyd because he's probably going to spend his last 30 years uh, of his life in prison. I did not get over um, to so, uh, so, you know, our, our hearts do go out uh, to the Bill Cosby who created great things for families. 
But, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, he's got to pay his price, and uh, we just ask that the Lord would be with him um, and uh, his family throughout this uh, throughout this time. So uh, we are out of time here we tonight. Are, we are, but one of the things I want to do is give greatness to R&B Roloff that did sponsor the yes. show tonight. One of the things I want to make sure you all know is Black on Powder Springs out in my area. That's right, I live in Powder Springs. That ain't saying just come up and pop up and just say it. Right. I'm in Papa Springs. One of the things I want to let you know, people are watching and they're endorsing what we do. So one of the things I want to make sure I give y'all that for the spring cleanup. One of the things that I want to let y'all know if y'all got a lot of junk in your house, call my man Floyd. He can get that trash out your home, commercial or residential. His number, 678-575-1781. And guess what? He will pick up the owner is willing to pick up for you. I ain't seen too many big companies do that. But I can tell you the little guys are willing to do what the big ones want. Absolutely. That's why I endorse them. That's right. There we go. That's my man. And uh, I poured something out for Bill Cosby. I don't know if y'all seen that. I had to pour it out for my home. It's not I like, like I, I respect yeah. with, with all when I, I don't really know. Yeah. But if, if he did wrong, he has to answer. But the one of the things I want to say is he started some things that I want to inspire myself to do better. One of them is he started some things about bringing family together with the Cosby Show. Yeah. And that's what I want to leave it with. Us coming together as a family, if that's marriage or not, but please understand, have that conversation because you can't assume no more. There you go. We have too much TV. And I like to say I don't want to add to the problem. I want to be a solution. Absolutely. Before I talk with Jeff. Can we go? And we are out. We out! Ain't no last calls here. Bar Talk with Jay.